Assalamu alaikum. This presentation is on the basic principles of the Z Plasti, a standard, common, and very useful technique in surgery. The technique can be used in a variety of situations for several uh, objectives. It can increase the length of a scar, particularly a contracted scar can be disfiguring and sometimes dysfunctioning. This can be lengthened uh, to more than 50% or 75% of its length by varying the angle of the uh, Z-plasty. It can also change the direction of a scar from one and direction to a direction perpendicular to it or angle to it so that it would conform better with relaxed skin tension lines. And of course, it can be used to interrupt and break a long disfiguring scar so that it can be camouflaged better. These functions of the Z-plasty are dependent on the angle of the Z. The higher the angle, the a more lengthening effect of the Z plasty would be on the scar. If we take the 60 degrees Z plasty, which is the commoner form of the Z plasties, a 60 degree angle here can help in increasing the length of the original scar or defect by 75%. The new uh, central limb will be lying perpendicular to the original. So you've achieved by the 60 degrees a 75% increase in the length and a 90 degrees rotation of uh, the scar. Um, if you take a 45 degrees, then uh, the, you can achieve a 50% increase in length and a 60 degrees change in direction. The smallest angle you can take is a 30 degrees because below that you are risking the viability of the tip of the flaps uh, can increase the lens by 25% and change the direction by 45%. And um, so the depending on the angle that you choose for your new two triangles, you can change direction and uh, you can lengthen and also you will end up having a nonlinear scar that can if you choose well, you can have the, cent the uh, lateral limbs lying better in according to the relaxed skin tension lines. So this is an example of a situation where you have the scar perpendicular to the nasolabial fold here. Uh, and obviously you want to change the direction of this scar to conform better with the relaxed skin tension lines. So you consider the two options of the Z-plasty um, and then you start the measuring process. Uh, if you can, you, you can use a, a thread of a suture as a compass. What you do here is you mark a line perpendicular to the scar and if you take an equal length to the scar that intersects with this line, then you can actually predict a 60 degree here. The other way is to draw a right angle and divide it into three parts. Um, now, if you want to check how this is good, this is not bad at all. This is just a little bit less than 60 and this is just a little bit more than 60 it's about 70 so you've got to shorten the arm a little bit but you've now have the z plus d with the central limb and the two lateral limbs in here and these two lateral limbs should uh, when you transpose the two flaps they would lie in a better position in relation to the nasolabial fold and the skin relaxation lines. With every scar that is going to form the central part of the Z, you have two choices. You can have the Z that starts from this point going in this direction, having the scar in the middle and then the other limb parallel to the initial one, or you can have it the other way around. The lateral limb starting here 
central compartment is the scar and the other limb is parallel to the first limb. Obviously, you don't want this choice, this option, because you end up with incisions that are not uh, in good relation to the relaxed skin tension lines. You probably prefer to have the other form of the Z. Uh, the, the main thing is that with every scar you have two choices and you would have to plan which is the best of the two options. Uh, you just give it a minute of thought and it's not difficult to see that this option is better than this is not the best option the other way around would be the better of the two it's all about planning that's the main thing in the z plus is you measure well the length of your scar and you try and draw a line perpendicular to it and it would intersect uh, with the other two limbs the equal if they are equal to the scar at a 60 degrees angle if that's what you want to achieve and you can test it and that's 60 and the other one is not too far from it and uh, the remaining part is the marking and sharp dissection and good undermining because you want to mobilize these flaps to lie in their ultimate position so a good undermining is again a key here and once you form the two equilateral triangles you can transpose them and now they lie in the new position and you can see um, that it's not difficult to suture them in place you have increased the length by about 75 percent uh, which is uh, not bad at all once the flaps are transposed you now want to suture them into their a new position and because these flaps are angled you would need to make sure that you get the tip of the angled flap in the exact uh, position required and also make sure that your sutures are not to going to compromise the already reduced blood supply of a tip of an angled flap you use the corner stitch which you start on the wider side uh, through the skin and on the angled tip of the flap you only pass your suture in the dermal layer in the deep dermal layer without penetrating the skin return back to the wider side and that's where you want to tie your knot in there and by that you have achieved good alignment of the tip of the flap and have not reduced its blood supply beside the usual variations in the angle of the z plasty there are several other variants you can have a z plasty with curved limbs rather than straight lines you can also have a z plasty in which the two angles are not equal and you can have a dub double opposing z plasty like the one used in the cleft palate repair or multiple z plasties we'll go through this in the next presentations we've been through the basic principles of the z plasty and in the next presentations we'll go through uh, some of the variants of the z plasty salam alaykum